Hello, hello, microphone check, one, two. <clears throat> hello, good morning, good evening. Today is April 5th, Sunday, April 5th, 2020. And I just wanted to do this quick little, um, quick little pop-up stream. Let me open the chat window in case anyone's here watching live. Um, if you're watching live, let me know how the audio is. Microphone check. How's my audio? How's the picture? And um, forgive me for the white balance. <clears throat> I'm using a natural light. So the white balance is going to be a little janky. Let me get a drink. Excuse me. Okay, so what are we doing today? Today, I wanted to, uh, I was working on this little head drawing. It's for a movie poster illustration. It's not official art. It's just a, um, a little, uh, it's a portfolio piece I'm working on. It's like a dream project I want to work on. And um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to, uh, to use more traditional techniques in my, um, oh, that's blue, actually. I'm basically trying to, um, that's my pencil sharpener, trying to get better at traditional techniques, not rely so much on Photoshop for the finish. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to try to do, um, I'm not going to try, I'm, I am going to finish this head drawing. And I'm just going to talk through the process. Hopefully it'll be helpful to some of you watching, uh, either live or on the replay. So if you're able to watch live, <clears throat> or if you're watching the replay, leave a comment below. Let me know where, where you're at. Where are you located? Where are you, uh, where are you uh, located? When, what time is it for you? So what am I going to do here? So I, I am drawing from reference. And um, if you haven't guessed already, if you're not familiar, <clears throat> this is for a, um, a poster concept for <clears throat> a TV show, Netflix show called Kingdom. It's a Korean, Korean uh, TV show. It's really, really well, well done. I'm really enjoying it right now. If any of you are uh, familiar with Kingdom, let me know in the comments. Or if you're not, maybe w what are you watching right now? So what needs to be done is, um, is two things. And this is tip number one is establish your contrast your range of values, meaning where's my darkest dark, where's my lightest light, so I, I have that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch in this, this eye. Because I need to see how dark I'm going to go. So this eye tells me that that's as pretty much as dark as I can go. It's as dark as I can go right there. Oh, and the eyebrow needs a little bit of value too. I'm gonna do that with another pencil. There's an interesting thing that's happening here is that the uh, the actual the rim of this hat 
it's a hat he's wearing is actually catching light because it's kind of lit from underneath so what's happening is that the actual rim of the light is brighter than the forehead in this area so that's tip number one is establish the range of contrast let's see where And before I jumped on the stream, I um, I also um, I looked at it from 20 feet away. That's tip number two: is to uh, look at your drawing from a distance. Look at your drawing from a distance. Definitely helpful. And when I saw it from a distance, I knew that this area, there's two problems with this area. One is that this eye is kind of janky. It doesn't really line up. So I kind of have to move this eye up. And the eye shape is weird. Because uh, I'm looking at the reference, and the eye shape He's kind of doing like this one eye is, is opening bigger than the other. So it's kind of throwing me off a little bit. And just the second thing, the overall value is way too bright. Way too bright. So this whole thing has to be a lot darker and let me rotate my paper here also there's a uh, again that rim of the hat because this is the main light source for his face is coming this way so the the rim of the hat is actually brighter than his face which is very strange not by much so i just need to remind myself and doing that little eraser job So I'm not going to have like a really tight edge. That edge was just too hard. We don't focus on edges. I know people look at drawings and they like to focus on edges. This whole thing is way too bright. Way too bright. Because uh, I kind of want this scene or the composition um, to be in a dark room so he's in a dark room at night and he's holding a candle that's what this area is he's holding a candle but overall this area has to be brighter or darker excuse me And I have to, my tone has to be fairly smooth and even with just subtle nuances of value, meaning subtle value shifts, really subtle. I don't want to render at all. In fact, the more, the more I render here, the worse this will look. And that's tip number three is to... Um, Tip number three is to have a clear hierarchy of finish, right? So if you want to finish something, you have to leave some things unfinished. You have to edit out. So I'm going to repeat that. That's important. If you want something to, f to look finished or be finished, you have to leave some things unfinished. If you want something to be finished or look finished, you need to leave some things unfinished. If you want, if you want the light side, in this case, 
if I want the light side of his face to be finished, I have to leave some areas unfinished. Meaning, if I spend a lot of time rendering and polishing and finishing and edge work and value control, da 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 da, and proportion and shape on this, I cannot do that here. And um, that's why I'm knocking it down. So if I want the eye and the face to look finished in light, I have to leave some of the shadow unfinished. So that's a huge, that's a huge part of, of, uh, it's a huge lesson you'll learn as you get experience. Um, and as a, um, you know, as, as a professional, I'm constantly working on this myself. I've been drawing for a long, long, long time, and I'm constantly working on this, knowing what to edit out. I think it's just, it's just a, a true master skill. And also, um, I see this a lot, a lot, lot, lot as a, uh, as a, as a teacher, you know, I, um, I'm sure you're watching this, you know, um, um, I've also been teaching art for a few years, um, uh, wrote a book on the, on the topic to help art students in figure drawing. But that's one thing I see over and over and over and over again is that, um, is that um, it's a common thing I see among art students and even, even some professional level experienced students, professional level artists, is that there's not a clear hierarchy and um, you know, artists fall into the trap of rendering too, too much, and that that's not good. Now I'm just quickly establishing the level of value and I'm going to uh, do a lot of looking away, meaning, um, you know, once, uh, once I stop the video, I'm going to look at this from a distance. And I believe that was tip number two, right? Look from a distance. And related to tip number three, so I, I lost count. Are we tip three or four? Tip four is use a mirror. Use a mirror. This is a little pocket mirror. So um, earlier I put this drawing across the room from me about 10 feet away and then I look at it in reverse through a mirror this is a common technique and doing that uh, helped me see some errors when I saw that in the mirror I saw that this value was way too bright way too bright and not flat enough it was way too rendered drawing too much attention and I saw that this eye was just was janky. It was out, this eye was whack. Even now, I'm looking at it up close. So just look at a mirror. So give yourself a nice, fresh perspective. Here's another tip. 
is um, unify the darks. Unify the darks. So actually, unity is uni unity is a um, Unity is related to uh, prioritizing details, hierarchy of details. It's another master skill that uh, I'm still working on, and you know a lot of great artists that I admire, and and you probably also admire and look at their work. Also, still working on is is the unity. So that means that uh, there's an overall connection relationship between all the parts of the drawing and that includes your includes your values so what what, the, what does that mean in this image well if i have a dark here and a dark here you know i can't leave them in isolation. They have to be connected and unified in some way. So this image is quite easy to do. You know, um, I just have to put a little bit of tone to you. The darks, these darks and these darks are kind of connected here. So you notice this was a conscious choice right here. I unified these darks right there. So I brought this little bow tie thing to this shadow. This is a shadow. And you know, it's easily connected to here which brings it up here. You see that? Now, to bring it to this eye, I just got to add a little bit of tone, which is in the reference as well. So this image was was already there, but you know, you want, you want to be conscious of that. Are my darks connected? And that's true for the lights too. If you're watching uh, this live or in the replay, let me know in the comments um, what are some things that you're struggling with in terms of your head drawing. Are you uh, are you working on your uh, realism? Are you working on uh, your proportions? Are you struggling to get um, accuracy, likeness? You know, let me know what um where you're at i think for me for me one thing that i'm um well i'm working some more advanced concepts one is is uh craftsmanship craftsmanship is meaning like um making my drawing clean making my drawing really uh you know not and, and being more efficient so, so these are some of the things that um and value control i think value control is something that um 
I'm really pushing right now. That's more of an advanced idea though. Okay, I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to step away. Right now I'm sitting down. So I'm going to I'm going to stand up just to get a fresh perspective and possibly use a, a mirror. I'm going to look at it through a mirror. You can see my oh, that's me. Look at a mirror. And um, um, we're going to uh, look at the drawing through the mirror. So I'll, I'll take a look at the uh, the chat box here. See who is in there. Oh, it's Mr. Chin. Hello, Mystery Manor. And oh, New Masters is in the house. Hello, Mr. New Masters. So I'm going to take a step back here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the drawing through a mirror. Okay, right away, the face shape. The face shape is off. Oh, sorry about that. Might have got disconnected. So I'm seeing a lot of errors in the mirror. I'm literally looking through a mirror right now. I'm seeing so many errors. Okay, the ear, the ear and shadow needs to go up. The cheek needs to go. The cheeks and the ear. It's not lined up. See, see now that I'm sitting down. Okay, let's get back to work. I'm sitting down, I'm like, oh yeah, of course, duh, it's not lined up. This ear is way too low. Not, not that it has to be, you know, everybody's ears are different. This cheek is way too low. God damn. And this shape is wrong. I mean, he's wearing a, a thingy, a little head wrap thingy. Um, but thank God the values are reading. Now I'm going to fill this tone. How long? I've been on here about 20 minutes. So I really appreciate you guys watching live or watching the replay. Let me, um, I'm going to fill this tone now. Maybe we'll talk about pencil technique. I should be, should, ah, I should be using a brush instead of my hand. That's a little sloppy. That's not good craftsmanship, actually. So let me fill in this tone. Actually, let me use uh, Oh, this would be a good time to talk to uh, Mr. Chin. I believe he's watching live. Mr. Chin asked a good question about pencil grip. So this is m the majority of the way I would hold the pencil, right? I call this the writing grip. So now I need to fill this area. This my hand is limited with this motion, unless I do this. So this is a comfortable angle for my arm. But if I do like this, the line will look like that, right? It'll look a little harsh. Thin and controlled, but very sharp. So I don't, I don't want that. I'm going to erase that, actually. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, instead of using this grip, I'm going to go with this grip. What this will do is we'll soften the line. See the difference? It will soften the line. Now, why do I want that here? Why did I change my grip? Is because this is in shadow. I don't want harshness. You know, I'm going to go over here. I don't want that in the shadow. That's way too harsh, way too sharp. I want this. See the difference? 
See the difference? Here versus here. So point of the pencil, more of side. And I can go even more side. See the difference? Even more side. So sharp, firm, soft. Sharp, firm, soft. So I want, I want a firm edge up here. So this is edge control. And this is covered in, I believe it's covered in New Master's Beginner's Course. Yes, it is. And I uh, explicitly, I explicitly wanted that in the outline. I had the uh, privilege to, you know, contribute to the outline of Beginner Course, New Master's Beginner Course, and um, I knew that that had to be in the outline. How to hold your pencil, it's, it's in there. So if you're watching this, definitely review that. And right now, um, during this uh, COVID outbreak we have here, unfortunately, um, these difficult times, New Masters made that free. So, and let's, let's go here. Let's go here. I don't need to sharpen my pencil per se. Okay, so I just changed my grip. Why? Because here, less control, right? This little area, I don't want to draw over these, these beads. So I need, I need some control, so I changed my grip. So this, this grip gives you the most control, but it gives you the, sh the sharpest edges. So I may not want that. So now I'm just releasing pressure. I'm using pressure. Using pressure. So again, I don't want to. I don't want this in this area because I want this area to sink back in the space. So I'm gonna change my grip again to more of the. So that's more of a edge control. I guess that's a good. That's a good segue into it. That's a good finishing tip, right? That's a good. That's a good tip to consider. Oh my goodness. And actually, I could do this entire thing with airbrush. Um, that's what uh, the guys I admire, Mike Butkus, Struzan, um, they use airbrush. And I probably should too. But I want, you know, th this is my, my, number one, this is fun for me. Man, this is a lot of fun. This motion is, is so much fun. It's probably why um, you know I'm in my 40s and I'm still drawing every day because it's just it's just a, he a heck of a lot of fun. So comment below if um, you know you're still like me. You're in this because it's fun. So um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, edge control. So that's tip number six. <laughs> is to be mindful of your uh, mindful of your edges and use edge contrast to to um, use edge contrast to su suggest depth the key word is suggest now what does that mean that means that if i want this area to come forward which i do i'm going to reserve my sharpest edges this, this is this is a sharp edge here, my sharp edge technique here, and I'm going to not use it here. Why? This is the background. This is behind him. I want that to sink in the space. I want this to sink in this, even the hat. I want the hat, really, the hat is just a big graphic shape that I'm using. And um, as this gets darker, you'll see less and less of the line and the edge, but it's, it's still there. So just something to be mindful of is to use edge control to, to suggest uh, depth. And uh, 
I will probably um, I'll, I'll do another video in the future uh, specifically on um, edge control and um, you know changing your grip so let's see let's go here now I'm gonna continue to finish this area can you guys see that okay and um, unfortunately my sketchbook is um, I spilled um, almond milk for God's sake in my in my bag and my sketchbook got wet it sucks so it's that's why the papers all warpy it sucks so I probably won't do many more of these drawings in my sketchbook so that's that's another tip is don't spill don't spill water on your paper. How about that? That's a good that's a good tip. Um, see now I'm using this grip again, the pencil grip, but check out what I've done. Um, if I choke it, choke it meaning get right up on the lead, right? If I so this is edge control. A lot of, but the edge is sharp. If I come here, I get balance of control, but I, uh, I don't have, I, I can use less pressure. So that's what I want here. So right now, I just, I just want to fill this area with tone. Oh, so the edge got sharp again. I just want to fill this area with some tone. Just so uh, I can see what the heck's going on. And I'm going to jump up here. I'm going to jump up here. This is... Um, I'm going to go this way. in my finish I want some of these lines to show through because one it's fun and one it's it makes it feel more like traditional I am probably going to uh, um, use Photoshop to um, to add airbrush look so one is that it um, It's fun, so, um, you know, it's fun. It's some, something I'm good at, too. Two, it adds to the hand-drawn look. Makes it feel... Three is very kinetic, right? As energy, that's good. Adds that kinetic energy. You know, your strokes are like little arrows. And um, your strokes are like little arrows. So um, these lines, you know, they do this. They add kinetic energy. And three, it's kind of a stylistic thing, right? It's, you know... Um, I don't see many, um, lots of artists use hatching, but in, in my field, you don't, you don't see that, that much of it, really. They, they, uh, they leave their pencil strokes. So that's something that um, I think makes me stand out. So that's... That's a stylistic choice. And you see right here what's happening. I don't know if you can see that on a camera, but there's a... Um, I'm digging in. I was digging in um, to this paper, which is leaving a crease. So that's not good. So how long are we on this stream here? About half an hour. 
So let me finish this tone and then I will uh, take a break for questions. So if you're watching live or watching replay, let me know um, what kind of uh, materials are you working with right now? And, you know, if you have any specific questions about materials, are you doing um, pencil drawing? Are you doing graphite? Are you using um, uh, pen and ink? I've had a lot of requests for pen and ink content, believe it or not. I have a lot of pen and ink artists out there which um, admittedly I don't use. Are you doing uh, gouache paintings or watercolors? Let me know in the comments um, what materials you're working with and maybe if you, um, if you have any specific questions, I might be able to help you. So right now I fill this area. I'm going to leave this, uh, the brightness of the paper, I believe. But obviously it doesn't read quite well because it's, it's not dark enough. This whole thing needs to be about this level of darkness. Pretty, pretty damn dark. Which I'm not going to do on this stream, that's for sure. Uh, uh, I'm going to, I'll probably use an airbrush technique in the computer. And um, if any of you out there um, have ever used airbrush, let me know in the comments below. To be honest, I've I've never used airbrush. Oh man, it looks like fun actually. When I look at guys like uh, Ben Oliver. He's one of my favorite artists now. He's like a poster artist, comic book illustrator. He does uh, covers now. Advertising illustrator. Man, his airbrush just looks so cool. And I know Mike, Mike Butkus does, Drew Struzan. Okay, so right now this tone is quite um, it's okay. It's a little, little wanky. Oh, I should probably mention um, if this is the first time you're watching me, um, the pencil. Pencils I use are very thin, and uh, the Prismacolor Premier. These are both made by the same company, Prismacolor. Prismacolor Premier is their is their um, pencil. It's this one is really soft and gets really dark. It's black, and uh, very thin is it's 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 also wax. They're both wax, but very thin. Um, uh, very thin is, uh, is harder. So very thin is harder, so I can get more detail. Uh, the Premier is softer, so I can go darker. So that's pretty much what I use, and that's industry, sta industry standard. Again, um, 
the, the top guys in the poster field use these, so um, and they do them for a reason because they're really nice. If you watch uh, any new Masters Academy subscribers out there have seen Mark Westermo's video, he, he uses these. He uses these for, for a good reason. And uh, my eraser is, uh, I believe it's Stedler, Stedler, it's, or is it Tombow? It's plastic. Any good plastic eraser. I believe this is by Tombow. And I got a Tombow detail eraser. This is killer. It's called Tombow Mono Zero. Woo, I love this thing. Um, I want to find a good electric eraser. Uh, this is great. Plastic erasers are great for erasing wax. And look look at that detail point. That's awesome, huh? And the paper is... Uh, excuse me here. St Strathmore Tone Gray Sketchbook. Um, those of you based in um, North America, U.S. and Canada, will have access to these. I'm not sure if they have them in the U.K. Any uh, U.K. viewers... European viewers, uh, let me know in the comments. C can you get access to these Strathmore tone grays? I'm, I know you can get tone paper in any country. Um, I'm currently in Thailand, and you can't get them here, but um, there's other brands with tone paper. Oh, and that's here's another tip for the pencil users. Get one of these. Get a nice pencil sharpener. Um, there's ones better than these because um, you want a nice long lead. So, so that's, um, that's, oh my God, look at that. It's, it just spilled crap all over my drawing. You want to get a nice long lead. All right, so I'm going to, oops, excuse me. I'm going to stop the stream here for questions. Mr. Chin says, I'm getting uh I'm getting 70% accuracy, but my drawings seem lifeless and mechanical. That's a great comment, Chin. And uh, I will definitely do a, another video on that because that happens to me a lot too. My drawings get really stiff because, you know, I use, you know, for my professional work and my poster work, I use a lot of reference. So it can get really stiff really fast. And I have... I have some tips and tools that will help you um, not make your drawing so mechanical. So that's a great question. We'll cover that in a new video. Basically, um, the short answer, Mr. Chin, to make your drawings seem add more life to them is... Uh, there's, I have three tips. Number one is um, I do a lot of gesture drawings from life, and I probably say this way too much you probably heard me say it in all of my videos oh go go to life drawing go to life drawing you're probably getting sick of hearing it but it's it's really true so i draw a lot from life and if i don't have a nude model i would sit at a cafe and draw people from cafe it's and it's very hard i understand that's why i wrote my book life drawing for artists it has some tips on that the second thing is to draw with your um uh, draw with your whole body um, so I would actually recommend that you stand up and draw with your whole... Right now, I'm, I'm moving my body. I'm not moving my arm. So learn to draw with your body. And what will happen is... Um, what will happen is you will, um, you'll make more fluid marks that will have more feeling and emotion in them versus this. See, right now I'm drawing with my hand and... Right now I'm drawing with my fingers, wrist, elbow shoulder, body. So learn to draw with your body. I'm, I'm not moving my arm, I'm moving my, my body right now. So that, that's, a, that's a quick tip to get more life in your drawing, is to draw with your body and to draw from life. I have another tip too, but I'll share that in another video. I have seen artist Costa Vavagiaka uses strokes at 45 degrees and cross head. I don't know what that is. That's a technique question. Harold Garcia, what time is your country? Hello, Harold. I'm in Thailand right now at the moment. I'm American, but I currently live in Thailand. Uh, it's 2.52 in the afternoon. 
How do you incorporate perspective? Oh, that's a great question. Harold Garcia, how do you incorporate perspective? The short answer is I don't. I don't, especially ones that are uh, mostly front view. But that's a wonderful question. Uh, I would say the short answer is form drawing, and I'll definitely talk about that more in another video. Where is the horizon line in relation to your drawing? Um, in this particular one, there isn't one. I would guess it's down here. This drawing is, is more of a 2D exercise. This is a flat graphic exercise. This is not a three-dimensional exercise. So that's the short answer. And most of my movie poster illustration work and portfolio work, I, uh, it's, it's like 80% graphic design, really. So um, I, don't, I don't do much form drawing anymore. Now, if I have to invent a pose, that's when I do. Um, I recently, uh, well, not recently, two years ago, I worked on Deadpool 2 poster, right? And I had to invent, I had to invent um, a lot of figures. And one, I had to invent figures that were sitting in a car. So that I did perspective drawing. Um, maybe I'll show that some, somewhere. I'm not allowed to show it yet. That's a great question though. In general, I don't, especially for heads. Awesome, are you those very thin pencil? I have a hard time getting a nice core shadow like you get in YouTube. Thank you, Bruce. Oh man, core shadow is tough, Bruce. That just takes a lot of practice. And um, yeah, very thin. Actually, I my favorite material to get edge control is combination of uh, powder look. So I use charcoal powder with a brush, and um, and I draw on top with with a sharp pencil. That's my. F if, you know, if someone point a gun to my head and said, oh, Chris, you have to render a perfect edge, I would use, uh, I would use charcoal with a brush and charcoal pencil. So like use the soft, beautiful look of a brush, of powder and brush. And I would use, uh, I would use um, charcoal pencil on top. Oh, Mr. Nam, thank you, Mr. Nam, thank you, and Kim, thank you, Mr. Bruce. What is the white done with? That's a great question. I forgot to mention that. So, um, the the white is done with um, these two pencils. One is um, this is a Prisma color, but this is all I have left. Oh my God, this is so sad. Prisma color white. It's same company, Prismacolor. This is white. Look at this. So so sad. So uh, luckily, I'm in Thailand right now, and I have uh, <clears throat> these uh, Faber Castell pit. This is pastel, I believe. Yeah, this is pastel. So sad. So this is wax. This is pastel. This gets a lot brighter, but have less control. This has not as bright, but have more control. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Every time I look at this, I want to cry because I don't know. I don't know how to get more of these. And the art store is closed, actually. During COVID-19, the, the art store is closed. What am I going to do, guys? What am I going to do? Somebody send me a pack, box of Prismacolors, please. Somebody send me one of these. I can pay you. <laughs> Anybody in America, help me. <laughs> um. Um, uh, hope that answers your question there. Magical boy, what are art books you would recommend? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a huge question. Besides mine, Life Drawing for Artists by Chris Legospi. Um, that's a, that's a great question. It depends on what, what you're after. Um, who asked that question? Magical boy, what books... I don't know, guys. Help help out, Magical Boy. What what art books um, are some of your favorites? Right now, I'm reading. Um, I'm gonna grab the book I'm reading now.
Of course, I recommend this, Life Drawing for Artists by Chris Legaspi, of course. If you, if you want to learn figure drawing. Right now I'm reading this. I'm sure many of you have seen or may have read this book. This book is awesome because um, I want to um, improve my composition skills. So I've been wanting to read this book for a long time. I finally got a copy uh, last time I was in the U.S. Framed Ink, what's up? Excellent book, I recommend that. And this is his latest book. It's on rendering techniques, so, you know, I want to learn um, his approach to rendering techniques. He's a fantastic artist and writer. So that's what I'm reading now. But you know what? Um, a short answer, Magical Boy, to your question is, um, the, when you ask me what book do you recommend, the very first book that popped in my mind was How to Draw the Marvel Way. Oh, man. How to Draw the Marvel Way. That was probably how to draw. It's This book, when I read your question, this book popped in my mind. I don't know why. Probably because it's... Um, it's probably the, f I was like 10 years old when I bought that book. No, maybe I was eight. It was, I, was, I think it was the very first book that I used my own money to buy. I was probably like seven or eight years old. And, you know, I'm over 40 now. So that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was in the 80s. So, and um, that book is still valid today, in my opinion. Also, uh, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth by Andrew Loomis. I, I think that that book still holds up. How to Draw the Marvel Way. Um, but guys, help out Magical Boy. What books are you reading? Comment below. <clears throat> That's what I'm reading now, Framed Ink. And uh, I'll leave my white pencils here. Ah. Harold Garcia asks, um, oh, Han says, how do you get different textures like those in the face and flowers? Um, that's more of a technique question. I do it with technique. The short answer to texture is that, um, you know, this and this and this, right? And this and this. All these I made with the same tool on the same paper, but they could all be three different materials. So the short answer to the question is uh, contrast. So if I want, if I want um, skin, I'll use a different technique. If I want f f soft fur, I'll use a different technique. And if I want Rough hair, I'll use a different technique. And if I want rough fabric, I'll use a different technique. So you see how th these three things feel like different textures. Because to me, texture is about material. You want to convey a material. So you do it with technique. Different technique. I hope that answers your question. That's a long discussion, and uh, that's currently one of the things I'm working on now is a course on uh, pencil technique. Harold Garcia asks, how do you incorporate golden ratio to the cup? Oh, man, that is a fantastic question. It's, he's asking a composition question. Woo. Woo, that's a great question. The short answer is um, the majority of the time I just fall back to rule of thirds which is generally golden ratio. Um, Harold, um, I wrote a composition article for Imagine Effects magazine about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago now. I believe it's 2017. Oh, actually, it's two, more than two years ago. I wrote a, it's a really good article. I put, I put a lot of care in that article. Uh, Imagine Effects magazine composition by Chris Legaspi, I think. I don't know if you can get your hands on it, but um, I basically use rule of thirds most of the time. In poster art, 
right? You see, you see this L-shaped composition a bunch of times, and that's the rule of thirds, really. That's the short answer. Man, I love talking about composition, so I, I am going to do way more content on that very soon. So thank you for that, Harold. I hope that answers your question. Rule of thirds. Mr. Chin, most of your works have vertical strokes. Uh, fighters have strokes in different directions. Yeah, th that's... Um, I do that for... It's not s style, but telling a story. So, you know, um, the vertical, to me, that's... Vertical design is very interesting to me, so I do that a lot. But if I use different angles, I'm trying to, I'm trying to move your eye, so it's, it's an eye flow thing. Mr. Chin, the more I think I'm learning, I realize there's more to learn. Yes, that's correct. That's why drawing never ends. Uh, Bruce says, I love your rendering videos. Watched him several times, still working on it. Oh, thank you, Bruce. Yeah. Um, you know, I wish I could reshoot those because I've gotten a lot better since then. Yeah, some of those videos I'm not proud of anymore. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. It's, it's still, information is still good. I would watch Mark Westermo too. Um, he has also videos on YouTube where you can watch him render with a pencil. It's fucking amazing. Mark Westermo, he's my hero. Principles look simple, but they took time to master, correct? Drawing Head and Figure by Jack Hamm, yes, correct. That's a great book. Creative Illustration, Andrew Loomis, Fergasso, yo, um, Riley book. All right, thank you all for watching the stream live and for your questions. Um, this was just a quick uh, pop-up stream. So hopefully I'll have, um, um, oh, I will be streaming more often and I'm going to finish this drawing now. So thank you guys. Uh, take care during this time. You know, one of the reasons why um, I want to come online today and, and every day really is, is I know many of us are, um, are struggling right now. I know, man, um, the situation uh, you know, the situation in the world is, is, is very dark right now for a lot of us. It's, in a lot of ways, it's getting worse. And I know many of us are stuck at home, so I hope that this uh, stream is, you know, it's just, it's just a way for me to add some positivity out there. And I hope that, um, you know, you can use these tips to, to grow during this time. If you have, if you're healthy and your family's healthy and you have the luxury to be able to draw, um, during this time, I hope that this uh, video, you know, can help you to, to grow and make the most of your time. So, you know, I appreciate you out there. Uh, stay healthy, and until next time, uh, take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. Next stream will be tomorrow on Poster Arts. I'll see you then. Take care.